This is Brand USA Talks Travel, a new five minute podcast to elevate the conversation concerning international travel to the United States. Here's your host, Mark Lapidus. During my research about you, I uncovered an amazing fact. You and I both lived in the lovely little town of Athens, Ohio at the same time. Go Bobcats! Go Bobcats! It's quite possible you actually heard a younger me on the radio on WOUB. Quite possibly. I did not know that. Our guest today is Liz Bittner. Liz is president and CEO of Travel South, the largest regional alliance in the United States. Since 2003, Liz has executed sales missions and marketing campaigns in many markets, including Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Italy, and the UK. She's led the partnership with Brand USA, supporting the region's economic development. Welcome, Liz. Nice to see you, Mark. Yeah, go Bobcats, right? Liz, working with 12 destinations is a huge undertaking. How do you adhere to your stakeholder priorities to devise one comprehensive international marketing plan for the region? Wow, you started with a hard question to start with, but (laughs) the region is the same size as continental Europe, like landmass wise. But what ties us together really more than our geography is our food and our music, our cultural authenticity, certainly our history, and then the outdoor spaces that are across the South. And so those authentic experiences are really what drive the marketing tactics. And so it's actually a lot easier than um, one would think because the tactics sort of bring us down a road where we can show off what we do best. Can you elaborate on the importance of collaborating with multiple destinations for an international marketing? Well, I started in the hotel industry when I was younger, and um, I used to tell people, no one gets up one morning and says, gosh, I'm dying to stay in a hotel. Where do I drive to see one? That is as true today in the domestic market as it is in the international market. For the most part, no one goes to a hotel just to stay at the hotel. They want to see things. They want to do things. They want to experience life. Destination marketing is much like that in that we start with, well, why would someone want to come here? What would they do? How do we be? How are we competitive against other destinations? Obviously, in the U.S., but um, in the international market, we also have immense competition for those lucrative travelers, global travelers. How do we inspire them to come here and then keep them here as long as possible so they spend the most amount of money? Could you explain to our listeners how Travel South works with Brand USA? So Brand USA, we have this great brother-sister relationship. We were very early on one of the very first organizations um, and state and with all the state tourism offices in the South that leaned in right after the Corporation for Travel Promotion Act was passed. And it was literally a huge leap of faith. I mean, there was no value proposition even laid out. It was everybody's going to lean in because darn it, we had asked for this thing for such a long time back in the Clinton era with uh, the White House uh, Conference on Tourism that we were like, if we can't make it successful this time, it will never happen again. So everybody lean in. Specific tactics that we do with Brand USA is we really look to them to help us with the consumer outreach, which is the hardest part. You need the trade, you need the PR side, you need the distribution channels. You know, this last part of it is helping to inspire consumers around the world to know about all of the attributes of the South beyond some of the iconic cities that may have a TV show named after them or an Eagles album called Hotel California or something, you know. We're trying to help folks understand, well, what's in Muscle Shoals? How far is that from Nashville? Brand USA really helps us inspire folks and leverage our pennies to make dollars. What type of return on investment does the Travel South region see when they market together versus going it alone? For every dollar that we spend, we reap $147 in international spending. And that is verified by our research partners, including tourism economics. Our goal now after the pandemic is to move back and then exceed our $10 billion in spending, which the whole is deep because the pandemic, for all intents and purposes, shut down the entire international and global travel everywhere in the world. And as it comes back, there is this massive amount of investment that's going to be coming from every country in the world. And so we don't want to get lost in the noise. As we close out International Women's Month, I've got a tough question, and this is coming to you from a guy who considers himself a feminist. What can men do to help achieve equality? Let me start with what I think women can do for each other. I think what women can do for each other is be kinder and help younger women step up to the leadership roles. That would help immensely. 
And then what I think men can do when they're sitting at the table, just consider them as an equal. Hard to believe, but we're out of time, Liz. Thanks for joining us. Hope you'll come back sometime. Before ending, I'd like to remind our listeners that we're always seeking new video content for Go USA TV. If you'd like to submit, please email us at GoUSATV at TheBrandUSA.com. We hope you'll subscribe to Brand USA Talks Travel and also pass it along to coworkers. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Mark Lapidus. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, email us at podcast at thebrandusa.com or call 202-793-6256. Our producer is Asher Mirovich, who also writes and performs all music and sound. Engineering by Brian Watkins. Be sure and let your friends in the travel industry know about this podcast. 